The Canadian Auto Workers Union calls it a betrayal. General Motors has announced plans to shift production of the next generation Camaro from Oshawa to Michigan. The move will take place in spring 2015 and while the CAW is up in arms, Finance Minister Jim Flaherty thinks it's too early to jump on GM. Um, let's wait and see about GM and Oshawa. They have certain commitments to us. They have kept every commitment so far, including very substantial R&D commitments in, in Oshawa. So we have that to celebrate. I haven't seen any evidence or been told of any evidence yet of any potential job loss at, at Oshawa. So as long as they're keeping their word, then I feel that it was a good investment of Canadian taxpayers' money, and so far they're keeping their word. Joining us now with his analysis on GM's announcement is Buzz Hargrove. He's the former head of the Canadian Auto Workers Union, and he's joining us here live in studio. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I want to get your thoughts. Certainly, this was an announcement yesterday that took many by surprise, including uh, the head of the CAW saying he had no indication this was going to happen. So what's your reaction? Well, I think it's absolutely stupid on behalf of General Motors uh, to announce something that's not going to take place for three years if it does, uh, just a few days before Christmas. The insensitivity of it bothers me more than the actual uh, announcement. So there's time uh, to work on it. But boy, why put this cloud of uncertainty over workers and their families in the community of Oshawa and the region of Durham this close to Christmas? Unbelievable. Yeah, you have to wonder about the timing, why it was important to announce this yesterday, seeing as it, as you did mention, doesn't come into effect until 2015. But I want to get your thoughts. What kind of impact do you think uh, the fact that Michigan is now a right-to-work state had on this announcement? Certainly GM is saying the decision was made two weeks before that legislation passed, but do you think that is a factor in all of this? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, to move a, a vehicle costs hundreds of millions of dollars. You're retooling uh, a plant to take care of, a pl uh, of the new vehicle that's coming into that plant. So General Motors would have had to been planning this thing for well over a year, long before Michigan was even talking about uh, right to work. So no, this is a move by General Motors uh, to consolidate their rear wheel drive production in the Lansing, Michigan uh, plant. Whether that's a good move or a bad, someone will, else will have to decide that. I just don't like the way they did it and I want to make sure that Mr. Flaherty, who's so positive about GM, makes them live up to their commitment to replace it with another vehicle so no one loses their job. Yeah, certainly that is the big question and the big question that's looming over all these workers is how many jobs, if any, are going to be cut? Now, GM, of course, citing lower capital costs, that's in quotes, I'll say, from their press release in terms of why they're moving to Michigan. What do you think this says, though, about the economic climate in Ontario? Do you think the government provincially is doing enough to attract manufacturers? We are talking of potentially something like 30 percent of GM manufacturing moving to Michigan? Well, we, we have a lot of problems uh, in Ontario and the country, and it's not the provincial government. Uh, I would say it's the federal government, the Bank of Canada, our dollar uh, used to be one of the main attractions to ensure that we got new investment, new assembly plants, new parts plants. Uh, the dollar's uh, over parity today. That has a huge Im impact on manufacturing. And then we have no support uh, for, for uh, manufacturing from our federal government. They're looking at the oil sands and they're looking at uh, our commodities and saying, as long as we're doing well there, we, everything is fine. It isn't fine. And the people of Ontario and the people of Quebec because of the loss of manufacturing jobs would be the first to testify to that. Certainly, but you brought up the dollar, the fact that it is at parity, but it's been at parity for now a number of years. So do you think at a certain point it's up to the manufacturers to adapt to this? Because the other big question is workers' wages. And we know places like Indiana, Michigan, yeah. they are demanding much lower wages than Ontario auto workers. Well, it's a combination of both. We used to be able to offset those kind of demands with the dollar. Our dollar uh, was as low as 60 cents. Uh, today, it's a dollar one uh, uh, and better. Uh, so, yeah, the, 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 the employers have to adapt, but you can't force them. Uh, to adapt. If they decide it's just easier to open up a new plant or put a new product into a plant in Michigan or some other uh, state like Indiana, like Caterpillar did when the workers refused a 50 percent uh, pay cut, and rightfully so, by, by the way, they should have refused it, uh, then uh, how do you control this if you don't have rules governing trade? Uh, Caterpillar and General Motors will move this product to Indiana and Caterpillar's case and Michigan and General Motors case, you have to sell it back into the Canadian market. Something wrong with
with that picture? I just We have about 30 seconds left. I want to give you the final word. In terms of you're, you're saying the government needs to be doing more, the federal government, what would you like to see them do in this scenario? Trade The trade relations, they ought to say to General Motors, uh, look, if you're going to move the products out of our Oshawa plant, because this jeopardizes the plant. If it's not replaced, they won't run a, a big plant like that with only two-thirds of uh, a production capacity. They've got to say to them, you're going to have to produce here if you want to sell here duty-free. That's the role of the federal government, deal with trade. All right, we'll have to see what comes of this. Certainly a lot more to come in the story. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. That, of course, is the former president of the Canadian Auto Workers Union, Buzz Hargrove, joining us here live in studio.